Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Welcome to Trading View. Welcome to YouTube and welcome to my subscribers. How you guys doing? Oh, I hope everybody's enjoying the holidays. A lot better than last year, right? Oof. So that's good. We're moving in the right direction. We still have Omicron. We still have problems, but um, yeah, at least it's better this year than it was next year, and hopefully they'll they'll continue. Um, you know, very difficult market. Okay, very difficult market, and uh, as George Soros says, a, a volatility occurs at turning points. And you know, uh, you're, you're right one day, you're wrong. You're right, you're wrong. You're right. It doesn't matter if you're bull or a bear. It doesn't matter. You're right, you're wrong. <laughs> Trillion of dollar markets being thrown around like rag, rag dolls. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, very difficult to analyze. Um, I do have a bearish stance. And that is based on macroeconomics, okay? Uh, but again, what good has macroeconomics done me in the past year and a half, almost two years now, right? Not not very good. Uh, so, you know, you have to be timid. You have to not dig your heels in and get dogmatic about stuff. You have to be prepared to be wrong. Uh, and, and, you know, just keep picking your battles. And that's the way it is. Uh, you know, am I convinced that this is going to resolve to the upside? No, I'm not, okay? This, to me, this whole area is just, you know, consolidation, confusion. Um, and at some point, we, we are going to find a resolution, whether it be up or down, right? Nobody has a crystal ball. I can't tell you what's going to happen, but uh, there are a lot of problems. So let's get back to, whoa, what is going on, Heather? Uh, gonna get rid of this. Uh, get away. Okay. All right. So let's get back to uh, uh, my little diary here. Okay. So we'll start with Apple. Man, as soon as I posted it, boom. <laughs> there you go, Nick. Happy birthday, brother. <laughs> yes, Nicholas. You did really good. Boom. Right in my face. All right. To me, it's still bearish. All right, uh, I'm not ready to concede. Although, having said that, it's not because I'm just being a, a wanker. Right? Uh, this is a bullish setup for more upside. Like it or not, I don't like it, but it, it is. Uh, but I, you know, I, I maintain my bearish stance. It, believe me, there's uh, many times where you get a test, uh, whether it be a head and shoulders head test or a double top head test, and it becomes a triple top or uh, you know, so you got to you gotta stick to what the whole pattern says rather than just one move up, okay? Uh, if, if it breaks out, right, if this turns into some bullish breakout, I'm out. I'm done. That's it. I was wrong. Thank you very much. That was pleasant. Bye. <laughs> All right. Uh, CRM, on the other hand, is a lot kinder to me. <laughs> Didn't really go anywhere, okay? So the analysis still remains. Turkey, I can talk about for hours. Maybe I'll do a special video on it. Erdogan comes out, says some stupid backdoor interest rate hike. So basically, the government is still going to print money. They'll just do it in a different way, and they won't call it an interest rate, and he'll look like he's a genius. Uh, but <laughs> the problem is that it's frustrating. The problem is that everybody's focused now about it. You know, they're, they're, they're looking at it really closely now. They're trying to figure it out. This is These are symptoms. You're trying to figure out what symptom is going to come next. That's it. The cause of all this started way, way back. Okay. And I want to say it again. I always say it. You cannot print, borrow, and import through economic prosperity. It cannot be done. It, it can't happen. <laughs> Can you do it for a period of time? Sure, everybody does it. Nobody has a problem with that. There will be periods of time where you're going to be an importer, a period of time you're going to be an exporter, you know, period of time you know, you're going to print, borrow, uh, and import. Okay, that's fine, but you can't do it as a way of life. Eventually, it's going to bite you in the ass. And, uh, and it bit Turkey in the ass. Okay, So now he can come out and the market can find some reason to take some profits, you know, make it seem like, oh, you know, what Erdogan just said is magical. There's nothing magical about it. 
It's the same thing as it was before. More Turkish lira than nobody wants. Okay, it's that simple. So uh, still bearish on Turkish lira. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Korea. Why do I care about Korea? Why should you care about Korea? Should you care about Korea? You think I trade Korea? I don't trade Korea. We care about Korea because we care about Asia. Okay, so you want to look at, remember, we're in a global economy. Okay, we want to know how world trade is doing. We want to know how the world stock market is behaving. We want to see how money is flowing within that global environment. Right. So that's why we care about Korea. Now, we know China is not doing very well. Uh, Vietnam has had some difficulties. Okay, Korea is not really performing all that well. Okay. Uh, Japan had had its problems, right? So we're, you know, they, they were in a lockdown. To be honest and fair to them, they were in a lockdown till recently, and they're trying to open back up. Uh, the problem is the way they're opening back up is, you know, thanks to Omicron, is making it difficult for them. So uh, while I would say from a charting perspective, just the chart by itself, that this is actually bullish, right? That you have a, a, a bullish setup here for more upside, okay? You have a structure above a structure, meaning you get a thrust up move, you get a structure above the structure, build some pressure, and then it takes off, okay? So why do I have failed move? Well, the reason for that is that the rest of Asia is not doing well, okay? And to be honest with you, the rest of the world is not economically doing well either. So I think this ends up being a failed move. Now, it's just going sideways for now, but we'll keep an eye on it, okay? Uh, I'm not ready to concede that either. All right, let's continue. Car sales. Car sales, you know, again, no piece of analysis. One chart does not mean is the holy grail of analysis, right? So uh, every other time before we had car sales tank, we ended up in a recession. Uh, is this time different? Maybe. I don't know. But uh, this is not a good indicator. It's not a good piece of the puzzle for the global economy going forward. Uh, keep it simple. I don't know why a moderator found this is not suggestible, but uh, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, my point, I guess I didn't explain it in, well enough. I, I don't know. Look, the point of this chart is very simple, that you have to be able to see price, and you have to, in the end of the day, analyze price, and you have to make it simple for your eyes and your brains to digest the information, right? And that's why Einstein says, look, make it as simple as possible, but no simpler than that, okay? I don't know why anybody has a problem with the Einstein quote, but whatever. Uh, and that's the point of this chart, okay? So, whatever. All right, dollar index overall, look at it, okay? Going from the top left to the bottom right, we're in a long-term downtrend. We, we used to be, uh, dollar index used to be at 130, went as low as one, uh, 70. Now we're at 96 in the middle of nowhere. There's no real analysis. And as such, I haven't really traded Forex <clears throat> all that much for the past several years, okay? And that's why you won't see me post too many of these uh, Forex charts, all right? All right, Fed said it's going to taper. It hasn't. <laughs> Trust but verify. <laughs> uh, you know, the wounds of honor are always self-inflicted. So why does the Fed say something that doesn't follow through? Right? I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't want to sound like, you know, tinfoil hat, but uh, hey, let's just keep it going until the end of the year, and then we'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't know. All right, uh, Volcker versus MMT. MMT says lowering interest rates will lower inflation. Well, we know now in Turkey that's not true. In fact, uh, Turkey's inflation as a result of lowering interest rates uh, will be 50% in 2022. Okay, 50% inflation. That's These are hyperinflation levels, my friends. Okay, MMT got it completely wrong. And... Um, you know, Volcker had a right, right? How, how do we kill inflation? Volcker raised, uh, kills inflation by raising interest rates. Who revives inflation? MMT, by telling you, hey, don't worry about how we're going to pay for it. Deficits are a myth. Don't worry about it, right? Don't ask how we're going to pay for it. Ask how we're going to spend it. 
That's what MMT says. <laughs> and as a result, we everyone's like, oh yeah, that sounds kind of cool. Yeah, you know, <laughs> what politician doesn't want to sit there and make all these promises and hey, free money for all, vote for me, right? And as a result, we got uh, inflation. Okay. So you're going to blame it on supply chains, transitory, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Look at it. You know, this is the problem that I have with incubator economists. Incubator economists come up with these nice little models. They put it inside of an incubator and they say, look, look how cute it is. Works great inside of an incubator. But it doesn't work great in the real world. So here's a perfect example. Look at this. Oh, I did my back testing and uh, guess what? Uh for decades now, the more we lowered interest rates, uh, the lower we had inflation. And I kept backtesting it and backtesting it and backtesting it. And, uh, yeah, that's the way it works, right? Because that's what that's what they want to hear, The court that the cart pulls the horse. But you're wrong. You never saw this coming. Never. You thought deficits were just a myth and that Milton Friedman was wrong, that, uh, you know, Inflation is always and everywhere a monetary uh, phenomenon, and it is. <laughs> it is. Nobody can argue that. Uh, the problem is that when you are putting the thermometer inside the productive economy, and those dollars are flowing to the top 5% faster and faster, and those dollars are not coming uh, from the top 5% back in investment in the productive economy, and they much rather go out and buy stocks, bonds, commodities, and real estate because it's backstopped the risk is backstopped by government, well, you're not going to have inflation in the real productive economy. So it's not going to show up. It's going to show up as asset price inflation, which is where the inflation has been taking place now for decades. And then suddenly we started giving helicopter money, and guess what? Inflation pops up. Boom. <laughs> right? Well, hello. I'm here. What's up, bitches? <laughs> And everybody's like, oh, it's transitory. I don't believe it. Well, you cannot believe it all you want. But at this point, in this stage of the game, with so much inflation, 6.8%, you don't have a choice. It's not up to you anymore. It's self-evident. So, uh, you know, again, what people don't realize, the only reason that uh, inflation kept falling was because the economic growth was falling, because we were importing, because those uh, dollars were funneling through uh, via profit to the top 5%, and they much rather invest in stock prices backstopped by the government and the Fed rather than investing in the real productive economy uh, where it's more riskier than a McDonald's, a Nike store, an Apple store may not succeed and they have to close and they'll lose money. But that creates jobs, and the more jobs you create, the more economic activity that you have, and the bigger the economic pie becomes for everybody, even with that risk in place. So they create their own misery, basically. So uh, that's the point of this uh, chart. Okay, we're not headed in the right direction. Clearly, we have inflation. So that means the government can't print more money. Uh, the yield curve is collapsing. So that's not going to create uh, uh, private money creation, right? Uh, you end up with another um, uh, problem with airlines. And here's, here's another piece of the puzzle. Where, where am I? Come on, move up. Move up, baby. There you go. Uh, you end up here, okay? What's the problem here? Well, there's no pricing power. Look what's happening, right? Airfare has been collapsing since 2015, and it's not getting any better. But yet stock prices are all-time highs, relatively speaking, right? So what's going on? What's <laughs> this is way overvalued. So let 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 me explain this to you. Right, we end up with zombie companies. What's a zombie company? It's a company that uh, is operating just to exist for the sake of existing. They're they're trying to uh, sustain the debt. They're trying to pay down the debt instead of growing and maximizing profit. That's a zombie company. And airlines are very heavily capital. Uh, uh, intensive okay so you they have more debt they have uh the cost of jet fuel rising they got to service that debt they don't have pricing power so airfares on average are falling 
And soon, with all this inflation, they're going to have to pay higher interest rates. Uh, and as they pay higher interest rates, that's going to further make it difficult for them to operate. Couple all that wonderful stuff with unit labor costs starting to rise because of inflation over time. And you end up with what? A zombie company. <laughs> uh, they're going to need to get bailed out or something. You know, some of them are going to start to blow up or they're going to have to shrink or cut costs or whatever. So you end up in a very, very bad place. Okay. Uh, and yet the stocks are all-time highs. Okay. They're way, way overvalued. All right. Uh, on to crypto now. Look, I've been talking about these cryptos that, you know, they've topped out for a while now. Okay. Here's Shiba back on December 1st. And what you see is that uh, this was indeed a false breakout. Okay. Uh, and it has continued to, to go lower. All right. Uh, even on the current chart that I'm showing you here, all right, it was down 7%, I think, for the day. For some reason, my chart is lagging, all right? Uh, it's kind of like Korea, right? It comes out, this typically would be bullish, okay, for more upside. But again, it looks like a, another failed move. And as a result, guess what? It is a failed move. Another one. So... Uh, just to put things in perspective, I, I told you back, I think November, th what was it? November 30th, I think. November 30th, then uh, I'm done with cryptos. I'm out. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm taking my profits. See you. Bye-bye. And uh, sure enough, since then, it's exactly what's happened. Okay. Uh, I have not been a fan of cryptos for a while now. Um, and, you know, if if you guys are following me, you would have noticed that I'm not really a particular fan of uh, cryptos right now. Doesn't mean I don't like cryptos. They're just they're not very uh, enticing to me right now as a risk reward. Okay. So what do we have? We had a, we had the one two three down. Then we had this nice little bear flag that broke and has since continued to go on down. Okay. Boom. So. Uh, be very cautious, my friends. Okay, 2022 is coming. Uh, I think economically overall, we're not headed in the right direction. Um, I don't think that the governments can print more money because of inflation. Uh, the yield curve is collapsing, which means you know bank profits are are, uh, are uh, shrinking, which means less money production. Car sales are not doing good. Airfare is not doing good. Okay. There's a lot of areas of the global economy that are not performing uh, as well as we have hoped coming from a recovery. There's a lot, a lot of difficulties, and I don't, I really don't think uh, we're headed in the right direction. Okay, uh, so that's it. Happy New Year to everyone. Healthy. Uh, be careful out there. Okay, and you see good, you do good, right? That's that's my saying for this year. You see good, you do good, as Mickey said in. Uh, the Rocky movie. So let's do good. Let's get out of this pandemic. Let's hope that things get better. And, uh, you know, we're ready for any kind of challenge, right? All right. Take care of yourselves, guys. Happy, happy New Year. Bye-bye.